Today we are talking about five things that I actively avoid buying currently for my Pokemon investing and collecting. And I'll tell you exactly why I avoid all these, but let's just jump straight into it. First off, you can see, oh, we've got some pretty nice cards here. You know, got a nice little Gyarados, PSA 9, and a Dragonite, uh, Dark Dragonite, PSA 7. Now, I don't buy below PSA 10 cards anymore. There are a few exceptions, but I'll tell you kind of what happens most of the time. You just start getting into collecting or investing, and when you first start, obviously the price is a big factor, and that's why people go for lesser, uh, you know, less than PSA 10, which totally makes sense. But once you, if you're going to stay in this hobby and this collecting or investing, um, you're going to realize after a little while that these just aren't, these aren't doing it for you and they don't have the value that you want. And especially once you buy enough of these, uh, like lower graded slabs, uh, you'll have realized that you could have bought a nice PSA 10 or several PSA 10s, depending on how many you've bought. And, you know, a lot of times you go, oh man, this card is just so cool. I, I like having it in a seven. And you do for a while, but it always wears off. And then you just want the 10s. So that is just what I've learned. It's for collecting and investing. If you can be happy with these, um, then stay with them. But most people, especially if you're serious about collecting and investing, these just, they're not going to do it for you. Okay. Um, it's, it's just something that happens, um, over time. So if you want to save yourself some headache, just go straight. If you're going to buy graded cards, it's about, well, I mean, for investing specifically too, you need to be getting tens. Um, there are exceptions like some grail cards and some vintage stuff like, um, you know, but this is just a, this is just a base set unlimited Gyarados, maybe for like first edition shadowless and some more expensive cards, you know, there, there'll be exceptions there, but for the most part, especially anything modern tens only. Yeah. So that, that is just one thing that I learned, um, fairly early on, but, uh, yeah, it was, it, it, it was a little tough. Um, cause I, I loved graded cards for a while. Next up we have the good old tins. And you can see I ripped this thing and I opened the packs. And who hasn't been to their local Walmart or Target or whatever? And you're looking to pick up some cards and you end up getting the tins. They're just, you, you realize, well, one, for investing, they're really just not worth it. Um, sometimes, depending on the number, pretty much the only tins that are worth anything for the most part, besides the really old stuff, is the ones that have evolving skies and I just <laughs> that one I realized fairly early on but if you were buying a lot of tins usually they're not worth it and not that they can't be profitable for investing keeping them sealed but the profit margins are just much higher in other places okay that that was a big thing for me as well I started realizing I was like oh I got some of this and some of this and then by the time I'm adding it all up I'm like, I could have gotten a booster box. Why, why did I not just get a booster box? So yeah. Um, so I actively stay away from pretty much any tins. Um, that also kind of goes with some of the collection boxes for the most part. Um, I will tell you there was an exception that just came out, the Shrouded Fable, Greninja and Kingdra collection boxes. I did get one of, uh, did get some of those, uh, because I like those promos, but that's kind of the exception to the rule. Um, next up, we have sleeved boosters. Now, I don't have a ton of sleeved boosters, but I have a decent amount. And while these can be these can be good investments, um, it's kind of the same story as the tins. Where, well, at least for these, they will have more growth. Like honestly, the tins I, I, they're just harder to move for the most part, depending on what they are. Um, these should be fairly easy to sell as long as you're getting good sets, like um, Lost Origin or, you know, whatever. But I, I, this was just the same thing where also if you're going to sell these, you're going to have to sell them in a lot, which there's nothing wrong with that. Otherwise, if you're selling them individually, that's a lot of shipping. But um, it just was not really worth it. I wasn't seeing the growth off of the sleeved that I wanted and I started realizing same thing as the tins I could put this money I could have I, well, I bought enough of these I could have just had a sealed booster box 
So yeah, that was a rough one for me. I was, I was getting a lot of these for a while. And, um, if you are buying a lot of these, you know, don't feel, don't feel bad. Um, because everyone's collecting and investing budget is different. So if all you can afford are those, and cause that's kind of where I was at a time, I was like, Oh, I'll grab some, some sleeve boosters here, some sleeve boosters there. And just, but I should have just saved up. So yeah, that, that was, um, a little bit of a tougher one for me to learn as well, but I finally got there. I finally, you finally, you finally lose enough money. You burn enough money and, and you get there. So that's why, I, that's why I'm just hoping to share this with you guys. Maybe help you guys realize before you make the same mistakes as me. Um, next up, these are both nice cards that I really like, but I'll tell you, you notice they're not PSA. So this is another thing that a lot of new collectors and investors fall prey to, um, is getting non PSA slabs now i to be completely fair i actually really like the look of the sgc slab i like the black um and i really like this card but they just don't hold the value so if you're if you're wanting to resell or you're wanting to just have your collection have the most value um it's just not worth it don't do anything but psa but there are a few exceptions for very expensive cards Sometimes CGC can be worth it if you can get the black label, which means like a pristine 10, like perfect. And the same for, I don't have a, a Beckett card here, but a BGS pristine, the black label. Uh, same thing. Those can be worth a lot. So those are kind of the exceptions, but as a rule, you just want to do PSA only. Uh, it's just, I mean, these are some cool cards. Honestly, CGC got a little bit better. They still kind of suck, but uh, at least they don't have the blue label anymore. The blue label is ugly. And SGC just doesn't have the value, but these are some nice looking cards. And I just don't know if I'm going to, I might, I'm just, I might have to crack them out and send them to PSA. I don't know. So that's just kind of the predicament I'm in. Um, one of the things that I did, I did not, so I did not buy these CGC cards. I have uh, quite a few, but I got them in a trade and yeah, I, I ended up getting a, somebody's whole collection and they had a lot of cgc so that's kind of how i inherited i have quite a few cgc slabs um the sgc i actually wanted to test out their grading service and they had a special going so i actually graded this card so yeah um but yeah so once again learn from my mistakes please um don't do this it's, it's just not worth it. It seems fun. And at the time too, when I was a little more new into grading, why I did SGC, uh, because I was like, oh, well, this is a card that's not going to leave my collection. And it was nine bucks a card to grade. So I was like, sweet, let's do it. Um, and I do like, like I said, I like the look of the slab, but um, once you get a little bit, you get a little bit of that finer taste, you know, you want the PSAs only. Um, it's just kind of, it's just kind of what, it's just, the best value unfortunately i really don't like that it's a monopoly that like psa like owns everything um as far as like market wise but so that that's unfortunate but it kind of is what it is at this point in time um the next thing up i don't this one might be a little bit more controversial but i'm gonna explain i don't just, so give me a second here um when we talk about this one you see this elite trainer boxes I don't buy elite trainer boxes anymore with the caveat. I don't buy mainline set elite trainer boxes unless they are the Pokemon Center promo. So I don't buy regular mainline set. So um, like uh, Crown Zenith or 151, that's not a mainline. Anything that doesn't have a booster box, um, I, I will get regular ETBs right? It doesn't have to be the Pokemon Center one, but I, yeah, they, for the most part, just aren't worth it. Now, that doesn't mean that they, there aren't exceptions. Evolving Skies ETBs are doing really well, right? So there's, there's always exceptions to the rule, but for me, just as a blanket statement, no more mainline ETBs, unless they're Pokemon Center. No more normal ones. It's just not worth it. You can put that money especially if you're buying multiple ETBs or a case of ETBs, you can put that money 
um, into booster boxes or Pokemon Center ETBs or things that will grow um, substantially better for investment wise. Um, if you just want to have, you know, um, if you just want to have some ETBs back here on your shelf, um, purely for looks, aesthetics, then, you know, go for it. But if you're, so that's more, if you're just going to collect them and you want to just have all the different ETB arts, then it's a little bit cheaper to get the regular ones than the Pokemon Center ones. So from that aspect, I would totally understand. But any, any investment related, if you're trying to make some sort of profit, if you're trying to sell these or thinking about selling them, um, also something to think about um, I don't think a ton of people are doing this, but I, I've seen a lot of comments talking about this, so I just wanted to um, address it a little. And that's with, the, I've seen some people that are like, i getting my whole collection, I'm never going to sell it. I just want it to be worth the most to pass on to my kids or whatever down the line. So that is kind of the same thing. Um, if you're going to be doing that, you want to just be making sure that you're making the best investments for long term. So that's what I'm talking about. Don't get a bunch of CGC slabs, SGC slabs. Get PSA. Get those tens. If you're gonna, if you're trying to leave them for somebody, or or whatever, and it just it gives your collection and investment the most value. So that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Um, tiny bit shorter video today. Usually we run a little longer, but I just wanted to touch on some of the mistakes that I'd learned and hopefully pass these on. Um, but yeah, these are just just five things that are pretty easy to avoid. And yeah, if, if you guys if you guys could even take one thing out of this video, um, hopefully that'll help. So I'm just trying to be helpful, spread a little bit of uh, my mistake. I've I don't even want to think about how much money I've wasted if I combine all of these products. So the tins, the nine, the anything below a ten, ETVs. Um, CGC and SGC and then sleeved boosters. Uh, I don't know. In the thousands for sure. Um, yeah, let's not go there. Um, yeah, learn from my mistakes, guys. Be better than me. That, that's why I'm, ho I'm hopefully helping you guys. But that will do it for this one. If you're this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, do me a huge favor and do yourself a favor. Hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on when I post daily videos. Leave me a comment. Let me know what your guys' um, biggest collecting and investing things that you avoid and then also if you guys want to join the discord we do have a discord server the link is in the description um there's it's we're approaching 300 members and great deal notifications 151 booster bundles just went back in stock on walmart this morning some guys um in the discord server were able to grab some so fastest way for you guys to stay up to date you're not going to see it on reddit you're not going to see it on facebook later you're going to get a notification on your phone so join the discord and that's going to do it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.